Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and I've got page seven ready. So I've got it laid out anyway. So I just wanted to pull six in so we could look at them side by side. So um, I'm going to do the same thing I did here. The base is on this side is going to be the yellow. So these are just laying loose and each of them have the cards have been mounted already and I've already added my magnets. We're just going to add our designer papers. So we'll start with this one, which is for four by five and a half. Four by five and a half. You're going to fold that in half and make a card. You're going to do two of those. These are both cut apart, so they're the same size. So we've got one on the left and one on the right. This is also a cut apart, and it is six by eight and a quarter, six by eight and a quarter. And that just happened to be the size of this particular cut apart. You can adjust that size if you decide to use plain designer paper. Um, and if I was going to adjust it, um, I, I, I think it fits together pretty well like this. I might make it a little narrower just so that it's uh, there's a little more of the pink showing through. Okay, and then the last one is six and a quarter by four and one eighth. Six and a quarter by four and one eighth. And that just, again, is just a nice frame around this cut apart. Double check your numbers. Once, what I usually do is I'll mount this um, so that it's sitting on a piece of cardstock like so. Then I'll, I'll put a tick mark and trim it and that's how I come up with that number because like I said the cut aparts are all slightly uh, there's a slight variance in all of them okay let's start by putting down our base page pink It is really pretty here today in San Diego. Super dry, so of course I'm getting shocked on everything. But um, a real nice breeze, so got the whole house opened up, which I don't do that very often. Um, and it's just pushing a nice breeze all the way through, so it's nice to get some fresh air into the house. It was cold this morning, but it sure warmed up. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and dress each one of the cards before we place them. And then I just have less paper floating around, easier to manage. So some of you, okay, we're on page seven. May have noticed that I'm producing less and less and um, you know, where I used to try to get a couple of projects out a month, I'm down to maybe one a month or one every five or six weeks. Um, and that is, um, that is, uh, because I'm having so much trouble with my arthritis. Sorry, sorry. I had to stop and think about what I was doing. So, um, I have made the decision, uh, along with Julie that, um, I will not be producing videos for the channel moving forward. All the, everything that's out there will remain out there under Scrap and Create, so it's not like you have to go find it. I'll probably continue to make albums, but um, only when I feel like it, or only when I feel like my hands are going to cooperate. Um, there's a couple of things that happened this year that really started making me be more conscious and concerned about my hands and how long I have to keep them. <laughs> and do mundane things like button a shirt and open a door. Um, so I, I was starting to have a little bit of trouble doing those things. And I'm only 60. I, you know, that's way too young. So I'm going to start really taking care of my hands. And some of that is being able to give my myself really long stretches of downtime where I'm not doing tedious tasks. Um, both of my hobbies had been very geared towards repetitive motion with my hands. One of them was gardening 
and I got away from that and now I'm going to have to start shifting gears on this. So I'm still going to be a creative individual, just not likely to be um, doing a whole lot of uh, paper crafts. I'm going to start trying to do some cards or some things that are just just not as, as uh, trying on my hands. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey with all of you guys. I appreciate all the comments and time that you have come and spent with us here on our channel. Um, we, we wouldn't be here without you. Um, the store will continue to operate. It's just that um, we'll be looking, and when I say we, really Julie, because um, I'm dropping out of the business uh, as of the end of the December. So she'll continue to do what she can to bring you content with new designers. And I know um, she's got Christine Woods doing some projects for us now, and she's really good. And you're going to love her stuff. She works closely with, especially if you're a graphic person, she works closely with Graphic 45 and had previously been an ambassador. Um, so you're probably familiar with her work. If you're not, you should be. You should go um, check out some of the uh, stuff that she's she's done. Now her videos actually get posted under her channel, but then we um, create a playlist on our side so you can see when she's releasing something new for you to go take a look at. So anyway, so that's that. Um, it's been a wonderful almost five years but um, I think I'm going to, like I said, focus on doing some other things. I am going to do teaching um, because that's only build, you know, a product and then show somebody how to do it and and uh, not, not trying to do that every other week. Um, so maybe once a quarter I'll try to do a class. If it's, um, if the class is done with paper that graphic, uh, that Stampin' Create provides, I will release a video on it. If it's paper that we don't sell, um, it will you you won't see it on the channel. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, the business in general has slowed down tremendously since um, the beginning of the year. So it's hard to know what the future holds, but that's at least what I can tell you about what I'm up to. And I don't think Julie has any plans of going anywhere anytime soon. Um, and you guys, I, I hope you love and embrace, um, Christine Woods. Uh, she's a, she's a great artist and knows what to do with paper. And she does, um, graphic and, uh, Chabella, Stamperia, all of it. So check her out on YouTube. If you don't, if you don't run into her on our channel, go seek her out. Um, and then I know Julie's always kind of got her eyes out for new designers. It is one of those things where at some point you feel like everything you do looks the same as the thing you did before. The only thing that's changing is the paper. So it is nice to have new designers come on board and, you know, provide, you know, just some freshness uh, to the space. This frame is killing me. I need to use it on something. I can't figure it out. <laughs> okay, I need a back for this. Here we go. We'll use this. This is just a back of a cut apart. Wait, nope. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use something else because I, I'll use this one. I really like that and I think I want to feature it on another page. Either page 8 or even the cover. Okay. Once I get this in, then we can kind of visualize the layout. And... I'm going to pull in page uh, six so we can look at them side by side. So there's some balance between the two and some flow. Again, I really do want to thank everybody out there for coming and spending time with us here at Scrap and Create. We amassed about 24,000 subscribers. And I know there's more viewers than subscribers, but it's very humbling to see that. And I appreciate it very much it it uh, came along at a time when I could really I could use that boost um, and feel and need the need to feel useful so thank you very much for your time over the years and um, for your patronage over at scrappingcreate.com I'm kind of in that state of I don't know what I'm going to do next but <laughs> I'm sure it'll be something uh, artistic I just don't know what yet and it may just be more personal. 
Okay, but I do love being a teacher. That's why I do want to continue to do some teaching. Okay, so this is uh, obviously page six. Um, I went back and I found these stamps and I really like them. So I'm gonna probably put two stamps here and I was inking them and I mislaid one of them. It's a darker colored stamp. And so I'm thinking about using those because this just feels like it needs something in the middle, particularly given the balance on this side. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. I do, this was the orientation I kind of came into this page with, so I'm gonna stick with it. We're gonna start gluing things down. And then, oh, I still have to cover that. And then, we'll look at trying to add some embellishments. So I still have to cover the back of this. It's too far over. Okay. so dry everything's kind of a little itchy so I'm looking at lining these up that would leave a little bit of a space here the other is I just center them and I, I actually like this better so I'm going to try to center them when I say center I mean from left to right on on this plane I really like these cards. They're so pretty. I was thinking about using them more on the pages, but just as the pages developed, I was like, oh, there's already enough going on here. I don't want to add, add more. Okay. So let's review. And then I need to cover this. So let me see if I can find... <laughs> my magnets are picking up my tools. Let's find... Okay. So the journaling cards on top, you know, don't have to be used for such as such. You can also, they can just be a, a mat. Um... But you can also write, you know, whatever is going on in this picture could be detailed in writing up here. Location, time, uh, participants, all that. Okay, that's it. Okay, now this page is pretty full, so I don't know that we can do a whole lot with it. But let's go ahead and pull page six back in and take a look at it. And I really like this. Now, there was some words and sayings, and I cut it apart, and I tried to do a little staggered word thing here. Didn't like the way it looked, so I'm going to dig around and see if I can't find something I like. Um, we talked about the stamps. It'd be ideal if, if something went up vertical, but I'm not sure I'm going to get that. That disappears. Discover. It all starts with imagination. That could go there. It's not ideal, but it's too wide. Okay. Nothing in the, that tray. I think I just found it. There it is. That's what we're going to do. Okay. 
it's actually meant to be vertical. So now it's a question of where, and I think that's it. It's not quite centered on this card. And I'm going to use um, some gems, which I don't usually do, but I think it kind of calls for it. And it's these bright red ones. You guys will have to tell me if you like it. When you're using gems, it's important to think about what this page is closing against. So these will scratch your photos. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like my up, my up to be designer paper and not necessarily planned for a photograph because by its nature, this is protecting what's inside. It's not going to rub like this. It's still touching, but it's not rubbing. So there we go. Let's see if I can't get a hold of this. Got my finger in there. Whoops, apparently not. Hmm. I'm going to let that go. That's my sister. I'll talk to her later. Sorry about that. Oops. I'm going to try the nudge technique. Flip it over and just nudge it into place. <laughs> there we go. Okay, of course you can see a ton of glue, but it's art glitter glue, so it will dry clear. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I can't do this anymore. Even with the right tools, my hands don't want to work. There we go. I think it's kind of cool. But again, if you're going to use crystals or stones or bling, think about what's on the opposing side. Uh, try to make sure it's not a photo so that you don't uh, damage your photo. So one of the things I am going to do off on my own is I'm actually going to try to develop a new hinge mechanism. I'm not, I've never been crazy about the hinge um, because when you open a page, they, they don't lay flat. So, um, and I've seen uh, lots of different ones. Um, I mean, pr probably what I'm going to wind up doing is merging a couple of different methods um, to come up with one I think is best suited for paper crafters. So I've looked at, you know, just book binding for books um, in general, where, you know, it's page by page by page where you don't have a gusset. And I've also looked at, um, you know, the really sophisticated ones that are stitched in. So there's parts that, I, uh, things that I like about a lot of them. And so what I'm going to really do is kind of back up and start with what, what do I want it to do? And then which methods allow for that? So I want it to lay flat when it's open, um, which means my spine cannot be attached to, I mean, the, the book cannot be attached directly to the spine. Um, otherwise it won't lay flat. You just, it just won't do that. I'm not crazy about adding um, a gusset with an extra um, score line on it because I think it makes the pages sloppy. So I'm going to kind of go through. And once I figure something out, if it's something I'm comfortable will work for other people, I'll probably go ahead and create a um, tutorial for Scrap and Create uh, um, and add it to the base album builds with just an alternative uh, book binding technique. You know, much of the wrapping and all that stays the same. It's really the the hinge, um, adding the book to the cover, that, that process. So anyways, um, I've always kind of been interested in that and trying to come up with something I like better, but I've never had time to sit and just do prototypes because I'm always trying to get an album out. So I don't get to relearn that process. So anyways, I'll be, I'll do some stuff like that where a little bit more thinking and a little less doing is involved. Anyways, there we are. I think my glue is dry enough. I can move my page now. Page six, page seven. Oh, yeah, everything's covered. All right, we're ready to go. Page eight's next. See you guys soon.